if you look up the word in the encyclopedia, church steeples. A steeple is a male erection. It's a, and that's what we call it, it's been erected. This church steeple was erected. The erected comes from the word erection. <laughs> and so a church steeple is a male erection. Okay, and therefore, uh, that's why in Washington, D.C., you have the Washington Monument, which is an obelisk, an Egyptian obelisk. Look it up in a dictionary, you'll see an Egyptian obelisk represented a male phallic in its erection. And the male phallic, which we call the Washington Monument, when it's in erection, is connecting to the female ovaries, or what we call the oval office. The oval office is the yeah. female ovaries. And so the Washington Monument is the male erection connecting to the female oval office. So much of modern day religion, Christianity, Judaism, and Islam all come from the same source. Most people do not know that. Christianity, Judaism, and Islam, all three come from the same root. It's Hinduism. Go back to the Hindu religion in ancient India and you will begin to see all the stories that are talked about in Judaism and in Christianity and Islam all can be traced back in history to Hinduism. The Hindus came up with the idea of a messiah. The Egyptians picked it up from the Hindus and they perfected the idea of a messiah. The Holy Bible is called the greatest story ever told. It's a story. It's an encoded metaphor. It's an encoded metaphor, symbolic story. It's telling you something very important right in front of you and you don't see it. <laughs> if you want to be a minister in this world today, you better go to a university as called a seminary. Is there, is, there, is, there, is there something in that we're missing? You're going to a seminary to become a minister? Why? Because the religion is all about sex, drugs, and rock and roll. It's all about sex. Everything to do with religion is inculcated in the concept of sex. And we call Jesus the Messiah. He was anointed. And that's a term that's used in Christianity and in all the pagan religions was to be anointed. Well, anointing has to do with sex. The sex between male and female, the sex period, was referred to by the ancient world as anointing. And this is why today, even in England today, when the queen or king is, is uh, anointed to be king, it's a religious ceremony in the church. And the Archbishop of Canterbury, the head of the uh, English church, will take a silver spoon. That's because the royalty are born with a silver spoon in their mouth. And he, he will take a silver spoon into a bowl of oil, collect up the oil on the spoon, pour it on the head of the woman. And after he's poured the head, poured the oil on her head, she is referred to as have been anointed by God to be the queen. That's the anointing, is pouring the oil on her head. Why is it called anointing? I thought Jesus was anointed. I thought the Messiah is anointed. No, anointing was used by all the ancient rulers of the world. To become a king or ruler, you had to be anointed, pouring oil on your head. So therefore, when you say Jesus, the anointed, or Jesus was anointed, no, anointing means sex. Because in the ancient world, before males had sex, they would lubricate their male erection with oil. Yeah, and so that's why they were anointed. And so the kings would anoint all the young women of the, of the town. He was the big anointing. He was the anointed king. And it's a fascinating world when you get into theology. Because the very word for God in the ancient Greek world was the, T-H-E. The was a, a word for God. And so we, if you're going to study God, it's called theology. Ology is a study of something like my, biology, terminology. Ology means a study of. And therefore, theology is a study of God because God is T-H-E. Therefore, when I ask you, you say 
you're working for some man. I say I work for the federal government, I work for the president. Therefore, I work for the man. You're working for a man, the. You, know, you have a car, yeah, I have a Maserati, I got the car. And so when we emphasize the word the, it has to do with the Greek understanding of God. It's the highest you can get is the. And so the is God. So the study of God is called theology. And therefore, in the ancient world, people in the ancient Greek world would go to an open air theater. And it was a place to learn about God in ancient Greek. And that's what we have today is a theater. It's called the God Show. People go to church. And it's a theater. Everybody pays and sits in a seat, and they're entertained with a movie, and they're entertained with something holy, and it makes them feel very holy, and it makes them feel that they've done something important. And so they're going to a theater to learn about theology, a God.